Today's EdTech video is specifically about those for Mac users because I'm talking about QuickTime and how you can use it to create a DIY whiteboard or a DIY dot cam when you're teaching online. And so you can either use QuickTime by itself for recording these kind of lessons or you can combine it with either Loom or Zoom to do pre-recorded lessons more complexly or even live lessons with Zoom. And so I'm going to show you how to do all these things. First, just the regular way to use QuickTime by itself, and then how you can use it as a whiteboard, and then how you can use it as a doc cam. Okay, and so let's go ahead and get started with all these tips. We're going to start simply and then work our way up to using QuickTime as a way to use a whiteboard and a way to use a doc cam. So once you have it opened up here, which I currently have, you go ahead and go up to File. And you'll see these top three, new movie recording, new audio recording, new screen recording. Now, if you just want to record what's on your screen, oh, sorry, then you'll click new screen recording. And then it'll open up here. You can tell the mic is working because I'm speaking and the sound is opening up. So then you just click record. And then you can decide if you just click, it's a full screen. But if not, if you only want a certain part of the screen, you click and drag and then you click start recording. Once it starts, you go ahead and say your piece. This is this, this is that, go here, go there, right? And then you finish the recording. You go on up, you can't see it here because of what I chose, but all the way up on the top toolbar, you'll see the record button, which will turn it off. It would have been right over here. And now you have this untitled video recorded of your screen. You can go ahead, I'm going to exit out of that, but don't worry, it will ask you if you want to save it. You can go ahead and say whatever you want to title it, and then click save. Okay, obviously I don't need that, I'm going to go ahead and delete it. So that's how you use the screen recording feature. Next, if you go file audio recording, Obviously, it's just an audio, right? So you go ahead and click record, and you can do your thing there. So you can do voiceovers this way, or just audio feedback for assignments, podcasts, episodes, whatever the case may be. Okay, and then exit out of that. And then again, file and new movie recording. So this is when we get more advanced. So if you click here, you can use the, the camera you have in your camera, sorry, the camera you have in your laptop. And so if you click down here next to the record feature, I'm currently have the camera on the iPad, which is how we start using a whiteboard. But this first time, the FaceTime HD camera, the built-in one, if I click that, you'd see my face, right? You'd see whatever is on top in front of the camera. So you can do that and you can just do a, you know, face-to-face -face recording of you speaking where they actually see you rather than seeing the screen of your computer. You can also make sure, like I'm currently using an external mic for better audio, but if not, you click here and it will just be inbuilt microphone. You wanna make sure you're not using the microphone from an external, uh, in this case, iPad, because then the audio wouldn't be as good. You wanna make sure you're using the internal one or using one that you, you know, have. And quality can be higher maximum. I'm keeping it high so we don't have a huge video file. Okay, and so this is leading to the second part, but just to stop here, so that's the three main ways of using QuickTime um, to record things, right? So you can record audio only, you can record your screen only, or you can record yourself on camera, or if you click that movie one, right? So it's file, movie recording, then in here, what's it called? I currently have a USB cord plugged in between my computer and my iPad, and that's why that's an option, and I click that here. So now when you're here, you'll notice, um, so I, I'm currently recording this, right? So you click here, and now it's recording, right? You click stop to pause the recording. And so when I speak, I'm gonna just click the screen. You'll see that I can go ahead and write on my iPad, and it's mimicked on my screen. So I'm using, this is just the GoodNotes app. I'm using my digital notebook, which you can have a try a free one if you want. I'll link it below. But you know, this is just me and I'm going ahead and writing with my finger. You can use a stylus onto this white piece of paper. 
And so you can go ahead, you can open up anything you want all to see on your iPad. You can just open up a PDF that you have or slides from a slideshow or whatever the case may be, right? And you go ahead and have this kind of whiteboard feeling to a pre-recorded lecture that you do, okay? Um, so I'm currently using Loom and QuickTime simultaneously. So I'm using Loom to record my whole screen so I can show you what I'm doing. And then I'm using QuickTime to record my iPad screen. Okay, so keep that in mind, I'm using two different services here. So if you don't need to record your whole screen, you only need to record your iPad surface, you can go ahead and obviously you can just record using your iPad, right? The, you know, the, the screen recording option there. But let's say you have, okay, you know, on here, I'm doing math problems or, you know, anything else here. But then like, all right, now let me show you an example from a website. Then you can click here and you can obviously go online and do your thing and go back and forth. So here you have a website, shows you an example of this thing. And now we're going back to my whiteboard and I'm going ahead and writing more and more. Okay, so, all right. And then let's say the next page here, you know, you might have either some kind of, again, PDF or PowerPoint slides, or whatever, and you can annotate them, right? So this is just an image from a Trello app that I created for accountability groups that's free to the public. I'll link it below. But I can go ahead and have, you know, that here, and then I can start saying things, right? I can write it out or type it out, whatever the case may be. So this is the way of using, you know, QuickTime as a way to have a whiteboard experience. Now, bringing it to the next level, moving it from that, because it's my iPad, right? So I have obviously a camera on here. So if I go ahead and exit out of this and click camera, you know, I can use it also as a dot cam. So I can set it up somewhere and just have it, you know, this is my, my four facing camera and here's the book that I've assigned before and I can go ahead and open it up and show students whatever I want. So if you have any printouts, and that's another way of using your iPad rather than as a whiteboard, in this case, as a dot cam. So we'll go back here. So that's a third way that you can use uh, QuickTime in order to make it like a really interactive experience. Uh, a few things to keep in mind is video usage. So if you show a video here, right, just on your website, so let's say you're recording using Loom and QuickTime, you will be able to hear this video playing on the Loom video, right? So if you're on YouTube listening to a video, you know, so you're recording that experience, and then once you finish pre-recording this lecture, you click stop, it becomes a Loom video, right? On that, you'll be able to hear the video inside the video, right? I know it sounds confusing, but hopefully that was pretty clear. Now, if you use QuickTime and Loom together, that's a different story. So let's say I opened up a video on my iPad, you would not hear the audio on the Loom video once you completed it, okay? So you have to use videos on your actual computer if you're using Loom to record your, different, your, your presentation. Now, if you're not using Loom, you're just here and you want to record yourself on QuickTime, right? Then in that case, if you show a video on your iPad, it will, you will be able to hear it once the recording is done. For some reason, I couldn't actually hear it when it was playing live, but then once the video stopped, I stopped the video, I checked the file. On the file, you can hear what the video was saying, okay? So keep that in mind. You wanna make sure that if you're recording the whole screen, right, so the movie and Loom, then you wanna make sure you watch videos on the actual laptop and not the iPad, okay? So something to keep in mind. For that doc cam option that I showed you, so like I said, if you wanted to just use it with, you know, the iPad, that's totally fine. But what would be cool, if you're only using doc cam stuff, you're not trying to do any kind of whiteboard thing, is I would use my phone instead, okay? Because it's much easier to maneuver. So you plug in your iPhone into you know, the USB cord, and then you have that set up somewhere, kind of like on a ledge or on a stack of books, or the case may be, and then it's pointed down onto a piece of paper or to a desk or the floor, whatever the case may be, and you can go ahead and use that as a doc cam, and you can write up problems by hand on a piece of paper, or you go over you know, PDF pages, like it has been printed out, a physical book, you know, it depends on obviously what you're teaching. So I would suggest if you just want to use a dot cam function, use your phone to make it really easy to maneuver. And so I'll show you an image of how I do this um, with kind of a, 
portable sanding desk that I have, which I also will link below um, in case you're interested in buying that. Uh, but this was kind of a suggestion I saw on Toyin's YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked out hers, the Academic Society, I'll link it below. So she had this, you know, video about how she used an actual real doc cam, you know, at home to teach her math classes. Um, but also how she used this movie feature of QuickTime. And so it kind of gave me an idea for this video too, but how you can use your phone as a doc cam if you don't have a real one that you can actually take with you to, to your house. Okay. Finally, something, a word of warning. So right here, I'm recording my whole screen uh, using Loom. And I'm also recording, as you can see here, this QuickTime video. Now, if Loom somehow stopped working, right, you, it, you know, it shuts down unexpectedly, the video doesn't load properly, because I've been recording this, at least I have, you know, that saved. Because once I stop here, it's its own recording separately. If you want to kind of save battery space though, so I'm going to go ahead and press stop, and you'll see that it loads the movie. So obviously the length will depend on how long that takes. So now that's untitled, and I'll save that later. So you save it, you rename it, and it's done. Now, let's say I went ahead and stopped now the Loom recording, and you know I went to Loom, and oh no, it didn't work. Well, at least I had the QuickTime still there. If I did, again, file new movie recording, you know, I don't have to, have to actually click record, you know. I can just go ahead and do my thing and write on it. And, you know, it saves battery because you're not doing two recordings at once. You're only recording here on Loom. But, of course, there's that risk, right? So if something goes wrong with Loom, you have no guarantee you'll lose everything you pre-recorded using your whiteboard. So, to me, better be safe than sorry. Just have your computer plugged in and it's not a big deal or have it fully charged and you can last for a while. But I just wanted to let you know that is kind of this element you can choose. Do you want to have both recorded at once or not? Okay, so once you finish your, you know, session, you go ahead and click stop recording and it should save it as a video on Loom and then, you know, you can go on from there on the Loom site. If you've never used Loom, I do have two videos, a long tutorial and also a short one. Um, so I'll go ahead and link the short one below so it's a lot faster and kind of shows you the main features it's free for teachers and students to use so I highly recommend using it um, like currently I have it that's only recording my screen uh, but you can also use it to record the screen and your face you can have your face on like, kind of like the bottom left of the screen at the same time or you can just use it as a webcam too right of just you not your screen so I do you know recommend it in case you haven't started recording any lectures or activities yet all these examples are about pre-recorded lectures or lessons, okay, not live ones with your students. So we're going to go ahead and show you the potential of that. So rather than using Loom, you can use Zoom, right? And so you still have this kind of, you share your screen and do something very similar. So I'll go ahead and show you what I mean by that next. Just a quick interruption. If you're enjoying this video, please make sure to click the like button below and let me know. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss any other ed tech tips or just tips about teaching in general, go ahead and click subscribe as well. I also have a PDF with ed tech tools listed along with the tutorials that I've already created for them. And you can access that in the link below too. All right, so let's go back into the video. Okay, so I'm currently on Zoom and I don't have my video on because I'm not camera ready. But this is me, I'm recording because I'm the one who started this, convers this conversation. And so what I want to show you here is that I click share screen and then you use desktop. Obviously there's a whiteboard function, but okay, so let's say I click that. Then I can draw, but like I'm drawing here with my mouse, right? So not exactly peak uh, drawing ability for myself. So if I go ahead and let's clear that because no. Go ahead and do my desktop and share that. Now you're seeing, let me make sure, here. And once again, I have the movie open with my iPad and I'm writing on it, whatever I need to, or I'm typing on it with a text box. Right, so much easier because I can use a stylus on my iPad where I can't do that on my actual laptop. So then I go ahead and click again 
and we're just no longer sharing. You could also just do the QuickTime specifically. So I could, I click that and I share that. All you're seeing on screen is my, my QuickTime movie. Okay. So now you see this part rather than my whole screen. So it can be obviously easy that way too, if you wanted to. But if you are wanting to show, you know, the QuickTime iPad, but also let's say some kind of video or some kind of um, website, then you'd want to use a desktop sharing rather than the QuickTime sharing. So I'm going to stop that. And now I'm back here. So here I am speaking instead. So you definitely have the option of doing live teaching using that whiteboard feature as well. But rather than having the built-in whiteboard, which obviously again on Zoom, I can't really you know, draw well with my mouse, I can draw very well on my iPad. So I can use either the QuickTime or the desktop screen options. And it's much easier for personally for me to use when using Zoom. So that's another option to consider here. Keep in mind, if you play a video on the iPad, when you're screen sharing, you will not hear the audio of the video. If you have any questions about using this tool, go ahead and let me know below. And if you haven't clicked like or subscribe yet, now is the perfect time. I want to shout out Toyin from the Academic Society. She mentioned using a dot cam at home when it kind of sparked my idea when she had showed the movie function on QuickTime. So I appreciate that. I'll go ahead and link that video below too of hers. Uh, but there's also these on the screen that might interest you as well.